you know, like, like, no matter what you do, if you're doing everything right, life will still give you a curveball. And, and it's those curveballs that make life exciting. You know, you're only living when, when you're experiencing the emotional spectrum. podcast where we have deep conversations about life, question the norm, all with the intent to thrive and prepare for the new age. I'm your host, John Astacio, and in today's episode, we continue our chat with Giovanni Ramirez. We actually talk about a turning point in his life where he almost died, which is just nuts. Um, You're going to like it. It changes everything for him, and I am excited to share this with you. So without further ado, let's go. I know you have an awesome story on appreciation. You had a scenario where you almost died. Yeah, yeah. Back in 2009, man, in the lowest point of my life, I, I'll preface it with I had uh, was making six figures and I completely lost that with a 2008 collapse, barely being able to pay rent, medical issues from the stress, trying to save a company from blowing up. Uh, my fiance lived in Canada. I didn't even have enough money to go visit her to try to save that relationship. And at the lowest wow. point uh, that leading into 2009, I'm attacked on the streets from my phone at the time. You know, s- smartphones weren't as prevalent mm-hmm. as they are now. And I'm attacked by two young kids on the street from my cell phone. They knock me out, dead cold, left me for dead on the street in the middle of the night. Uh, and I lay there probably for like three hours, you know, three hours. And I, I open up my eyes to a a street light that is flickering on and off. <laughs> you can't make this thing up, you know. Um, and with like immense pain in my jaw. And um, it was interesting because I was at a party. Uh, so I ran into the party. Everyone had left. My friend was sleeping in his in his. Um, in his room i busted in and i was like hey you know i was attacked and left for dead on the street he actually didn't believe me you know um he thought i was just like you know we had been drinking but i wasn't too uh too off like that but you know he he was like oh you know it's just been a wild night you know go home and um so i walked myself to the hospital that day it was like three blocks away from the hospital walked in and um didn't really realize how it, life or death it was until like a couple of days where i'm like I was laying there on the street for about a few for a few hours, you know, because <laughs> I thought insane. about it like the like it's like three or f- almost four o'clock when I walked into the hospital. So I was laying there for a while, um, and uh, you know I had a broken jaw, um, wired shut for two and a half months. You know, went down to like a hundred and two pounds. You know, just wow. link, drinking liquids and getting sick of that. And uh, it was just like one of the lowest points of my life, you know. Like everything I had ever worked for had been lost, and including almost losing my life. So it, it really took me to a dark place. Um, um, one thing I did learn is was the, the ability to forgive. That was beautiful. Like I learned how to forgive two days after I was attacked. When I I thought to myself, should I be upset or be angry about this and Mm. be angry at these two kids? And I very consciously decided to let it go. And it was so beautiful because I I don't remember that experience with anger because of that. Uh, Never Mm. did, you know. Um, And then, you know, it it, it had taken me to such a dark place. that for a while um i felt like the world was in black and white you know i had it was a, a, de- a definitely a depression a, a victim story that I had told myself for a few months um about you know everything that had happened not just the attack right <laughs> the attack was like the 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 climax of that that particular movie um but everything about losing my my uh, amazing income you know Losing a a person I loved very deeply, and um, and you know being attacked for and left for dead on the street, and so it all came uh, colliding into a very depressive, like maybe like an entire year, and then um, 
I had this really cool thing where I was laying back and listening to NPR. <laughs> um, and they had this story about like copycat suicide. If some if a person commits suicide in a family, that other family members will actually, you know, probably copy it. Like two or three wow. people copy it. And I was I was to the point where I was suicidal, you know, just because wow. I couldn't get out of it. I could not get out of it. And everything was black and white. And um, like I couldn't see color. I couldn't see the spark of life. And, you know, listening to that, like that radio segment. And and uh, for me, it was ordained from like a spiritual being, a, a God, you know, Jesus. You know, uh, I was raised Catholic. Um, and so for me, it was a message from above saying, Gio, I know this is what you're thinking, but if you do this, you know, your nephews that really look up to you, they, they're going to see this as a possible outcome for themselves as well. And I just mm. couldn't, I couldn't, you know, go forward with anything uh, in that sense because I, I felt like I was going to be opening a door for someone to actually copy me. And so that night I chose happiness, you know, and I chose appreciation for all the, the, the things that had happened to me. Um, the, the negative experiences, I decided to grow from all those. And, and that's where the, the appreciation really comes from. Um, hmm. That no, you know, like, like no matter what you do, if you're doing everything right, life will still give you a curveball. And, and it's those curveballs that make life exciting, exciting. You know, you're only living where, when you're experiencing the emotional spectrum. Think mm. about boredom, right? Yeah. Think about your, uh, John, think about the most boring task that you could do. Like maybe somebody locks you in that room and you don't even have a, your laptop, right? <laughs> and locks you in that room for the whole day, right? No books, no nothing. And you, you can't experience emotion, right? Yeah. Uh, or you do go into emotions. You might go into dark emotions. But um, even in your darkest moments, you're experiencing life and you're experiencing emotion. And it's the lack of emotion that really kind of drives our, you know, at least for me, drove me to suicide th uh, suicide thoughts because I couldn't feel, I couldn't experience. I have gone so dark that the dark became just grays, right? And wow. I, I'm not kidding you. Like life felt like it was in black and white. <laughs> like the giver. Yeah. I, I literally felt like as I was walking around, like I would see people's like clothing in black and white. It was that dark. Um, wow. And the moment I chose happiness, like everything came back to life. And so, you know, my theory is, is that you have to purposely choose happiness. You know, purposely choose it. And some days you have to choose it like more than one time. Sometimes you're going to choose happiness as soon as you wake up and it's going to be easy and the whole day is going to go easy. And that's the only time you have to choose happiness that day. And then other times you're going to have to choose it like multiple times, you know. I like uh, that. And then uh, and if you get that in that type of habit of that and, and being appreciative and, and thankful for what you have, then life gets colorful. And then you start to appreciate the 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 wild stuff that happens, you know. Like I, I, you know, I've gone through some wild stuff recently that most people, you know, wouldn't even be able to tolerate. Mm. And I look at it like I'm having an existential moment while it's while negative things are happening to me. I literally am going looking at myself like, holy crap! Look at the crazy stuff you're going through, <laughs> you know. I can imagine. And I'm like, that's crazy, Gio. I can't believe that. What a wild life you're going through. And um, and then you get happy about just going through these things and saying like, you know, things will, things will change. The tides will come in, in and out and you'll appreciate that. And 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 going back to the conversation we had with people is that peop you will experience that the same way with people is that mm. you will enjoy their rides of uh, tumultuousness and their tribulations and you will and you will enjoy equally enjoy their growth as well in their evolution and, and development and 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 you'll attract that kind of energy into your life you'll attract the energy that 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 is evolving and whoever's not evolving will sort themselves out very very quickly you know 
Um, I, that's yeah. Pretty, I don't know if, yeah. I, if that like was a good description of it, but you know, it was it was. I felt like I was in that movie, The Giver. You know, walking around, <laughs> everything's black and white, the void of emotion, and uh, your your palette, your whatever you want to call it. What do you call it when you you have paint colors? What, is it a palette? A paint palette? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, yeah. if you if you think about it, like even the doctor, like you know, they have like the you. Whenever something's hurting, right? They have that chart with the little happy faces or how much <laughs> did it hurt? You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like the the max level ten, the guy's like grimacing and tears are coming out. <laughs> uh, and, and if you think about it too, it's a, uh, we experience life in in colors. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I'm a big. I like that that song, "The Colors of the Wind" from Pocahontas. You know, uh, because is that it, what you play in the gym? Yeah, that's what I play in the gym to work out. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's the motivation. And so, choosing happiness lets you paint with all the colors. You know, that's insane. You know, in, including I, the the dark ones, the negative ones. You know, do you think that 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 experience built that muscle to switch up your thoughts? I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because even though I was able to forgive, you know, it's still, uh, you know, going down to 102 pounds and not being able to eat and talk properly, you know, talking. Oh, you're sure. Oh. You know? <laughs> that's that's a that's a true story of, of rock bottom emotionally. And, yes. And yeah. everybody, uh, a lot of people go through that. And it's one of those things where uh, in your story, it just proves it that a lot, what people say when you hit rock bottom, what ends up happening is that means that something amazing is going to happen shortly after. That means you're at the turning point. Yeah. yeah. And you have and, an awesome story. And you have a lot of those in life, you know, like whoever listens to this, you just have a lot of these points in life that, that you just pivot around. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you, you, you can, you can definitely, uh, pe people ask me, Hey, Gio, you're always in such a good mood, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because my good mood comes from the darkest of places, right? Yeah, it, it, I I get inspired from knowing the fact that you, you know, you can you may not have a lot of time left on this planet, and so you know, which is a really dark thought, considering I was left dead on the street for a few hours for a phone, right? Um, and t turning that into like, well you know, we can go at any point in time. So why not just like enjoy like the ride, right? Enjoy yeah. this amusement ride, you know? And I, I was also thinking um, you came from a low point. I would love people to hear where you're at now and how they can contact you uh, if you have any uh, any projects you're going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Thanks for asking that. I, I actually, so uh, since then I've, I've dedicated my, most of my entire, most of my uh, living daylight hours to uh, like helping people as much as I can. I've uh, been career coaching, uh, write really dynamic resumes uh, to get you like an extra 10 to 15k uh, in your job hunt. Um, and uh, you can reach me at, at the world of geo on Instagram. And, you know, I work in finance, helping individuals like uh, get a financial resource while they're going through like terminal illnesses uh, and late stage illnesses. And uh, also help people uh, with some life insurance planning and how to, you know, pay less taxes with that in the future. Nice. So we can yeah. go into that in another topic. <laughs> yeah, we're, to we're definitely going to come back. Well, thanks, Gio, for your time. Awesome conversation as always. Thank you for sharing that story. I hope that somebody out there appreciates it. And till next time, we will chat some more. Have a good one, man. Yeah, totally. Thanks for having me on, John.